Hey, I'm Dan Persons. You want to know what's going on in genre? Here's what's going on in genre. And really, what's going on in genre is Man of Steel. Uh, yes, the film is finally opening on Friday. After all the hype, we get to see what it's all about. Uh, it's directed by Zack Snyder. Uh, the script is by David S. Goyer. Uh, Christopher Nolan is one of the producers on this. It's starring Henry Cavill as Superman, Amy Adams as Lois Lane. Uh, Michael Shannon is General Zod, the big bad for this film. And a bunch of other heavy hitters, Russell Crowe, Diane Lane, Kevin Costner, Lawrence Fishburne. You'd think they wouldn't uh, want to buy the, uh, the best talent for this film. Of course they would. Um, I'm going to run some sound bites for you, and one of the things I wanted to focus on here was Nolan's participation, because it's kind of interesting. Warner's brought him in. Uh, it's kind of understandable, uh, you know, after Superman Returns bombed. Uh, that was the previous attempt to reboot the Superman franchise. Uh, clearly, they were a little nervous, and since... Nolan did wonders with uh, reinventing Batman with the Dark Knight tri trilogy. Of course, they wanted to have him involved in some way. What's interesting about that is that Zack Snyder is a very stylized kind of director, particularly in his latter the latter part of his uh, his work, uh, you know, lots of CG, lots of virtual settings, um, sometimes too much stylization. Uh, I think Sucker Punch was definitely going over the edge in that particular case. Some people defend it, didn't work for me, too artificial. I really did like Watchmen, though, actually, and some people slammed that, but there you go. The thing about that, though, is that Chris Nolan runs away from stylization. He's more natural in his uh, approach to things, even when it is a big film with lots of CG. Uh, he tends to do uh, stuff like focus in on a lot of location work, um, bringing a, a lot of physical plausibility uh, to his mise-en-scene. So, uh, stuff grounded in the real world. So. How do these two guys play together with their different aesthetics? Well, let's take a look at uh, the sound bites by Zack Snyder and uh, producer Charles Roven, and maybe there are some hints there. I wanted that experience of being out there on location to influence everything, Henry, all of us, design, not be, you know, corralled into shooting one little corner of the set because there was nothing else to film. <laughs> uh, being able to kind of improvise, you know, as we filmed. And I think that's, we did do that. And I think that that shows in the movie, there's a much more organic quality to the film, even though, you know, look, there's huge visual effects in the movie. There's no two ways about it, but there's also some real gritty reality that we were able to get by being on location. Um, and I think that just performance wise, it just was better for the actors to be really there. What I really love about the way that they've approached shooting the film handheld is they've been very faithful to the, you know, documentary, cinema verite style of what that brings on the one hand. But John is such an amazing operator that when you really need certain moments to be intimate and to make sure that you're not conscious of the camera. He's such a fantastic operator that he's able to make you forget it. The camera barely moves. And then when you want to break that intimacy, just to remind you, oh, you're watching something and it, as it's happening, or maybe you are getting something, uh, you're getting to watch something that, uh, that maybe you shouldn't be watching, he breaks it or he'll approach it with that immediacy, that documentary look. Isn't that interesting? Should we detect the hand of Chris Nolan in that, or is that maybe Zack Snyder just rediscovering his roots after all? Before 300 and all of that, 
he did do a very credible remake of Dawn of the Dead that owed nothing to uh, CG and virtual sets and all of that. So maybe he's just now rediscovering something that he was actually quite good at. But moving on, let's talk about the super suit. Um, by the way, this is the second day in a row we've used this particular image, but this is the one we've got, so please do enjoy it. Um, but there has been some uh, grousing um, going on about this particular version of the suit, in particular the fact that Superman is now not wearing any shorts. And really, you know, it's as if this the uh, the success of this film is going to hang on whether Superman is wearing his underwear on the outside. I don't think so. But then again, you know, this sort of stuff seems to happen a lot. People were grousing when uh, it was announced that the X-Men were going to be wearing leather instead of spandex, or people were unhappy when Batman uh, got nipples in his bat suit. You know, that's the way it's going to go. But let's listen to Henry Cavill talk about uh, the super suit. And then, just for fun, let's listen to Michael Shannon talk about Henry Cavill. Impressions of the costume? I love it. I think it's um, a really good modernization of something very classic. Um, it's got a very alien feel to it, while being recognizable as, as the, the, the suit that we know and love. Um, I, I think it just it brings a sort of a, almost like a testosterone energy to something, um, which I think is required in today in today's sort of movie world because everyone is so used to things being so high octane and, 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 and visceral in the news. Movies are, are, are fantasies, have to be even bigger and better and I think the suit lends something of that to this. It's something which is exceptionally cool and otherworldly at the same time. Henry is very dynamic. And, and charismatic as, a, as an actor. He's, um, and he's very unflappable. Um, I can't imagine how hard it's been for him, uh, all the work he's done for such a long time, uh, to not get bogged down by that. Um, he's very, uh, I don't know, the camera starts rolling, he hears action, and he just snaps into it. Um, he's obviously thought a lot about it, um, and he has a real sense of what Superman or Clark or Cal would do and wouldn't do, would say, wouldn't say. Um, and his, the, his, to him, uh, Clark's sense of, of dignity and his sense of values uh, are, are very important, and he'll always protect those, I think. Don't they make a lovely couple? I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing Michael Shannon as General Zod. I really love him as an actor uh, in any case. Um, but let's get a look at the trailer now. Um, something interesting, this is at least from the source that I was downloading from, this is the latest trailer for Man of Steel. And I realized I'd never seen this particular trailer. So get a look at it now and see if you learn anything new from this. sheltered one of my citizens. He will look like you, but he is not one of you. To those of you who know of his location, the fate of your planet rests in your hands. To Kal-El, I say this. Surrender within 24 hours, or watch this world suffer the consequences. You will not win for 
whatever human you save, we will kill a million more. I won't betray them. You already have. Man of Steel coming to theaters everywhere on Earth eventually. But uh, as for tomorrow, it'll be here in the United States. And um, elsewhere, if that's not particularly to your taste, there's a whole bunch of other films uh, coming out this weekend. Most prominently, This is the End, the, uh, the film where the Judd Apatow stock company faces uh, the ultimate apocalypse and that seems to include spaceships and earthquakes and demons and it's getting pretty good buzz so that might be worth a look also uh, coming out in more limited release I believe Hatchet 3 the third installment in the very gory quasi satirical horror franchise and then an, a, uh, a more unusual one Barbarian Sound Studio. This stars Toby Jones as a sound guy who's working at a studio in Italy that does sound effects for Italian giallo films in the uh, 1970s. Um, this is borderline. It's more drama than uh, uh, actual horror. I don't think there's really any sort of overt horror in it. It's getting good praise though and because of the subject matter that might be worth a look. And that's it for now. Check out more stuff over at cfqonline.com.